you have to write a function to find the longest common prefix amongst an array of strings. So you are given a collection of strings again, and you have to find their longest common prefix if it exists. If it doesn't exist, then you return an empty string. Uh, let's look at this example where it exists. So we are given three strings. All three of them start with FL. And FL is the longest common prefix. So the output is FL. If you try to add a third character to it, the first two strings share an O and a W as well, but the third string has an I at the third character. So FL is the longest you can go. And if you have a collection where even if the first letter is different between two strings, then the longest common prefix across all of them is going to be the empty string. Uh, yes, Tal? So um, it's, I mean, we can build a, a try um, and then start a DFS and check only if it, the children length is one, we keep adding to the slate. Once the children length is, is bigger than one, we stop and that will be the, the answer. Um, okay. I think you can do this also on insertion, but it's a bit more complex, but it also in the worst case, it won't help you. But like the second case, you might not need to insert all the words into the tree. Um, so you can short circuit backtrack earlier mm -hmm. if you do it on insertion. But I think the first word is a bit trickier um, because the first word you have to that will be the longest prefix, and then and then you can do this algorithm from the second word. But I don't know. I'm sure there's something more elegant, but it's I don't like to do ifs in algorithms so much. So maybe mm -hmm. the second one is a bit more elegant because you just okay. do it. Yeah. Sure. Uh, any other thoughts? Pankaj? Hey, Omkar, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, okay, so uh, I'm not sure. Of course, the, there must be a way to do it in a try way. But if we do it in a simple brute force way, I mean, simple way, let's say if we put every string, for example, let's say we scan first string, the we store it in a hash map. Let's say when we start scanning the first string, if we scan the F as a one character, FL as a one character, FLO as a one, one count, mm -hmm. FLOW as a one count, but then start scanning the second one, that's how we build the counts. And if any counts is equal to the length of the, the total words, that will be our answer in a simple way. Okay. Does that work? Uh, so, we, uh, hmm. yeah, we're just counting the prefix and see if any prefix is equal to the length of um, total length of the words. Right. So, uh, let me actually go back to. Uh, I, have a, I, have a, I have another solution. I don't know. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, since we are talking about uh, trinodes today, I'm sure you know, this problem can be solved using the tri data structure, trinode data structure. But when, let's say, in the interview, if this problem is given, what I would, I would not even you know, think about uh, addiction, uh, the trinode. Probably what I do is the what is the common prefix is find the the length of the word which is the smallest of all the words, okay, and uh, iterate through that length for every word. Okay, first mm -hmm. let's say if there are three words, for instance, here the words are like. So, yeah, I got it. Uh, I got the solution. In fact, uh, we are actually going to, well, yeah, I mean, you, you're doing it in two passes, finding the minimum length word first. Minimum and length. Then, and then, and then uh, yeah, and then. I, I, in, I mean, in terms yeah. of Java, I come up with it like a string builder. Right. Um, yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's a perfectly valid solution. So, uh, uh, yeah, that's, yeah that's, you, could use, you could use that in an interview for sure. Because you know, the previous question, 
uh, which is the longest word in a dictionary mm. it is not an easy question the way what we solved you know use anything where involves backtracking i wouldn't mm. consider as easy it mm. has to be a medium mm. level question I mean, in my opinion i would just yeah, say yeah. so yeah. there's actually a reason why i included this um and that is to point to actually a question uh, that shovita asked was also related to this that how do you decide that a try is needed or not needed uh that's in, so maybe using the try it's a better algorithm in terms of time complexity but well it's not clear uh, so that's what we have to debate whether whether a try is actually needed for this problem or not so going back to the problems we have seen the first two problems we saw directly involved implementing a try so there was no ambiguity there that a try was needed the previous problem we did longest word in a dictionary uh, we said that uh, a try would be helpful now from a problem solving standpoint when you are given that problem and you don't it's not clear to you that a try is needed uh like shobit said you could try a decrease and conquer approach so let's say uh let's say for the first n minus 1 words that i am given i know what is the longest word somebody has already computed the longest word in the dictionary for the first n minus 1 words and i as a lazy manager am only looking at the last word and see- seeing whether the last word can overhaul uh, the answer computed so far so how do i know that it will overhaul well i need to know for the last word whether every prefix of that last word exists in that collection or not so how many so if my word is of length d how many such prefixes would there be well, there would be order d uh, prefixes now uh for each of those prefixes i need to tell as quickly as possible whether or not that prefix exists in the collection and so i am doing a search so given a string i need to search quickly whether that string exists in the collection now we could use a hash table but computing the hash function value on a string of length d is itself going to take order d time as we saw last time so uh there are order d strings you have to look at and each of them is going to take order d time so that means in a decrease and conquer approach you would need order d square time uh just for the last manager to do the work and so that means across n strings you can say it's roughly order n times d square time so uh that's what decrease and conquer where you are using a hash table to make the search operation efficient leads to and the question is could we do faster that would have been the natural question had somebody gone in that direction and so that's where because we are looking at prefixes we are looking at all possible prefixes and checking whether they exist if we had everything in a try the answer to that could come in order d time instead of order d square time because uh, in a try as you follow down the path to that node to the node corresponding to that last word you are looking effectively at all the prefixes the growing prefixes up to that up to that uh, node and whether or not each prefix exists in the collection is just going to be given by whether or not each node is an end node in your try so that trans that sort of transform and conquer approach leads to uh an improvement in the complexity so we shouldn't tr- you know blindly go after a try for this problem uh let's start with a decrease and conquer approach and then see if uh any other approach could make it faster so suppose i knew the longest common prefix for the first n minus 1 words 
I take the responsibility only for looking at the last word and seeing how it affects that answer. So I take whatever is the longest common prefix from the first n minus one words, and I compare the last word character by character up to the length of that longest common prefix. If I see a complete match up to that point, uh, the answer doesn't change. But if I see a mismatch before I have looked at the entire length, or if my word itself is shorter, then that longest common prefix is going to be shortened by this last word. But the time that is going to needed, that's going to be needed for me to make that comparison, is going to be proportional to the length of my word. And if that's the case for me, then for if I if if people before me had used the same decrease and conquer approach, the total work done by everyone across the board would be proportional to the number of characters uh, in that collection, because every person would be doing work proportional to the length of their respective string. So that looks actually like a good enough solution. It can be. It can be done in place. Uh, I don't need a hash table like the previous problem. And uh, the time that it needs is proportional to the length of the, you know, some of the lengths of all the strings in the collection, which is, which is good. If we th thought about this in terms of a try, given the phrase prefix, common prefix, then you know, we would think of building a try on this entire collection of strings. So firstly, that would need extra space beyond what's in the input. And then how would we do this? So suppose I, I had, um, I inserted the first string. Well, if I, I could build the whole try, if I build the whole try, then, um, and, and if it had a structure like this, where the root node had multiple children, then clearly the longest common prefix is the empty string. Because uh, at the first character itself, you know, there are different words starting with different first characters. So there will be a, a common prefix with a non-zero length only to the point where there is a single path from the root. And as soon as we reach a node, where the, from where there are multi, that there is a fork, that is the longest going to be the longest common prefix. So we could build a try like this, and uh, that would be, you know building it would take time proportional to again to the sum of the lengths of the uh, of, of all the strings, and then followed by you know one scan which is uh, which is going to be ordered length of the longest string in the worst case. But comparing this with the uh, decrease and conquer approach we did, there is no advantage to using a try here. It's using extra space and uh, it's not taking less time. So, so uh, we have to be a little careful when we analyze, uh, you know, how and where to use tries. So it falls under a transform and conquer strategy. And uh, we usually go for it when a decrease in conquer strategy uh, is leading to a suboptimal solution, which in this case, it's not. So for that reason, we'll prefer a straightforward decrease and conquer approach. Now, there are variations of that. You know, you could find the small, you know, how you, uh, do a single pass through all the strings and get the longest common prefix at the end that, you know, there are variations of that. So what I'll do is I'll just, you know, follow the typical decrease and conquer strategy. I'm going to assume as a lazy manager that uh, if, if, if I am looking at the ith string and the earlier i minus one strings have already been processed, I have, uh, uh, a longest common prefix from them. I'm just going to take that the length of that longest common prefix 
and i'm going to look at the length of my ith string see whichever is smaller uh, and just compare the first uh, that many number of characters and see if the length of the longest common prefix has to change that's that's all so that can be written in the form of a for loop so for i uh, varying from so uh, if i vary i from 0 to n minus 1 where n is the length number of strings in the collection i need some candidate for the longest common prefix at the at the beginning i don't have it uh, so why don't i just pick uh, i could just pick the first string as the longest common prefix candidate to start with or i could pick the length of the longest common prefix to be infinity to start with so it, it doesn't matter there are different you know, these are all equally valid variations so i'll just assume that i varies from 0 to uh, the length of the collection of strings minus 1 and my longest my longest common prefix length uh is equal to the length of the first string in the collection right that's what i'm starting with and each manager in the in sequence is looking at uh you know the next string in sequence and computing the longest common prefix up to their point so when i am looking at the when i as the an arbitrary manager responsible for only the ith string because i am lazy i am assuming that people before me have already computed this for the first i minus 1 string so i'm going to look at the ith string and see how does this change the length of the longest common prefix so firstly if the length of the ith string is smaller then the length of the longest common prefix is also uh, going to be smaller so let me actually first do that so the length of the longest common prefix is going to be the min of whatever it is and the length of my string so i start from there and this is the number of characters from the beginning that i need to compare uh, in both strings when i say both strings i mean whatever is the longest common prefix up to that point i can look at those many number of characters in any of the prior strings so let's say i'm going to compare it with s with the with uh, the zeroth string okay so i'm going to have i'm going to compare both strings character by character uh from zero like the first lcp length number of characters and wherever i see a mismatch if i see that the for, for you know my string which is the ith string in the sequence if the jth character of that does not match the jth character of any of the earlier strings that means my longest common prefix length has to be reduced to j minus uh, well if i'm looking at the jth character that means j characters have already been examined before me so the length of the longest common prefix has to be reduced to j because the j plus first character clearly uh, did not match so i just reduce this to j and once i've done that there is no point in continuing on because uh at least i'm done with my string right whatever work i had to do as the manager i've i've done so i can just break out of this of of this uh, for loop and so we have to store the, the longest common prefix as a string or we have to swap them if we so we have to return it now if i if i know what the length of the longest common prefix is i can look at that many number of characters from any of the strings in the collection any of the strings in the collection right at the end so if i had to return whatever the longest common prefix is 
if its length is 5 i return the first five characters of say whichever is the first string or the last string doesn't matter so let's say i'm going to take the first string and return as many number of characters as the length of the longest common prefix right so you can say the first first characters of what however you specify this in your yeah, yeah. programming language so the time this that this will take is going to be proportional to the sum of the lengths of all the strings in the worst case all the strings will have the same length so uh so it will be order n times d where t is the maximum length of any of those n strings now using a try would have you know would have also um, led to the same complexity but then there is no need to transform if you are not improving on this complexity and you are using extra space as well So Shobhit, does this uh, clarify? You asked that question earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, this is very helpful. Now I got the sense of it. So, like, at least that's what I figured out. So, if we have to somehow we if to solve a problem, we have to find all the prefixes of a of each words to like. If the, then we should go for it because it's easier. It's it's like we can find all the prefixes of the word. in try right in order d mm-hmm. otherwise if you want to use a brute force we will use order cord like cord order d square yeah. and that and in this question we don't have to get all the prefixes of each word right because the question is oh, yeah this this is helpful omkar yeah so yeah this is uh, uh, that's why I like even though the best solution here does not use a try i i still put it here just so that you know uh, the, the, it looks like you need a try here based on the name of the question but uh but when you focus on the strategies the problem solving strategies and if a more basic strategy is sufficient then you don't go for a more complex strategy and decrease and conquer is always more uh simple compared to transform and conquer Arif, so uh, Onkar, is it guaranteed to uh, uh, that all the uh, provided strings will have a common prefix? No, not guaranteed. It could be empty as well. Right. So empty. Uh, let's say flower, flow, flight. Can I have apple there? Yes. In that case, so it would be the empty string. In that case. in that case lcp length will turn out to be zero and when you take yes. the top string it will be an empty right yeah it will be empty so you'll take the first zero characters of the first string which is going to be an empty string you can also short circuit when you see zero right and just stop the the whole yeah you can short circuit it's just that uh it has yeah. you know worst yeah, case you have to case. go away. yeah i mean you can add those optimizations certainly after the basic version of the code is is running correctly now there is a related problem uh suppose you are given a set of because this this phrase longest common prefix can be defined in a slightly different way as well suppose you are given a collection of words in a dictionary and this dictionary is the dictionary of an inverted index in the context of information retrieval systems and you have a query term you want to find the longest common prefix between the query uh, and assume this query is a single term otherwise you know for each term you would have to do this so it's a single word and you want to find the longest common prefix between that and one of the words in the dictionary and because queries will keep coming to your search engine or ir system you have to 
be able to implement this operation fast so now uh, this becomes a streaming context where you know the queries are just coming in one at a time uh, now one of the uh, not streaming sorry online context now if you were to use a simple approach you would need to compare the query with every single word in the dictionary so if there was only a single query that was going to come in you would compare that query with all the words in the dictionary one by one and that's the best you can do right without even seeing how the all the words in the dictionary uh, you can't really know for sure what's the longest common prefix uh but if the queries are going to be coming in constantly then you might benefit by doing some pre processing some transformation of your dictionary words so that the comparison between the query and all of the dictionary words to get the longest common prefix can be done much faster and so now if we think of organizing the dictionary words in the form of a try then to get the longest common prefix between the query and one of the dictionary words we would essentially search for the query in that try and if our search culminates at a valid word uh, a valid node in the try that means the longest common prefix is the query itself but if our search jumps off before reaching uh, the end of the query wherever we jumped off into vacuum up to that point all the characters that we have seen were common to the query and at least one of the dictionary words and so that would be the longest common prefix so this is where a try would actually help to find the longest common prefix when you have to uh, when you have new queries coming in all the time and the collection uh is fixed but these new queries uh, you you'll, you'll be asked to find the longest common prefix between a, an arbitrary query and the words in the dictionary right whereas if you look at this problem it's like a one time uh work you write a function to find the longest common prefix amongst an array of strings what's the you have to look at all the strings in the worst case so uh, not not only in the worst case uh, well yes in the worst case because if the longest common prefix ends up being the empty string midway then you can bail out but in the worst case that's the best you can do and even here if it was not an online context if it was a one time query there would be no benefit uh, from a try because building the try would also take time proportional to the uh, size of the you know all the words collectively in the dictionary but if it's one time work then this clearly benefit any questions about shobit yeah umka maybe i misunderstood the problem what's wrong in this approach where we just get initially find the longest common prefix of all the words in the dictionary and whenever a query comes just compare with that lcp no so this is uh, actually not so the longest common prefix here is between the query and one of the dictionary words in this previous problem okay this was common across all the uh, oh. terms in your all the strings in your array okay so it's a it's like it's a much reduced prefix right? yeah, it's like it. multiple comparing mm-hmm. a bunch of them at a time and getting the longest oh, common yeah, across i misunderstood, misunderstood from okay thanks okay so that's why uh, you know you wouldn't use tries blindly but only after some thought <laughs>